Hello friends, Michael Shane Bloom here, just in the woods out by my house and uh, popping around with my Sigma 100 to 400 telephoto lens. And I thought it would be appropriate to do a video on my favorite tricks and tips for using telephoto lens. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to do with this lens is to use it on less than ideal days for landscape photography. Now I know this is probably a little subjective, but uh, less than ideal landscape photography days being days that are clear, days that are overcast, days where there's just not a lot of texture in the sky. One of my favorite things to do with this lens is isolate the subject without the sky. So it's much easier when you can actually zoom in and pick out little areas of the scene to focus on. Because when you're standing in a scene like this and you're using a wide angle lens that sees everything, it's really hard to isolate out certain areas or not get the sky in the frame. You end up having to point the camera straight down if you wanna get a wide angle shot without the sky. I find it a lot easier with this lens. I find it super easy to just be creative, have fun and create some really intriguing shots shots even when the lighting is well considered kind of poor so i'd encourage you if it's looking kind of clear out you still want to go take pictures pop on the telephoto lens and just play around just see what you can find do some handheld shots and uh might be able to find some really interesting stuff i've actually taken some of my favorite landscape images with this lens in less than ideal conditions so here are some compositional tips with the telephoto lens the first Try some minimalism with this lens. Now, uh, I love shooting minimalistic scenes in landscape photography, and it can be quite difficult with a wide angle lens because you're including everything. And oftentimes these wide angle perspectives can be very chaotic. The place that I'm sitting right now, there's trees all around me. And if I shot a wide angle frame, there's lighting in different places. There's all these textures and shapes and colors, and that can be great. It's definitely not simple, um, but with this lens, you can really isolate those objects. You just have to remember if you're trying to go for minimalism, just look for simplicity. Look for those empty spaces, look for repeating lines and shapes, um, whether that be a tree sticking out of a sky with just a cloud in the background or a patch of fog with a little hill on top. You can create some really intriguing stuff with this lens. Okay, now on the opposite side, this lens is great for intimate shots abstract shots of textures and patterns. And uh, it's one of my favorite things to do with this lens. Just go ahead and fill the frame with your subject, providing your subject is interesting enough and there's enough repetition of shapes or textures or patterns or colors to make that type of intimate shot work. And of course, this goes back to my first tip where it's really fun to do those types of shots on days where it's less than ideal for landscape photography. All right, let's talk about long exposures. Um, I do love shooting long exposures with this lens. I'm a big fan of shooting long exposures. It's a little bit trickier with this lens than it is with a wide lens. Further in the millimeter, like a 100 millimeter or 400, you really end up seeing every little bump, every little camera shake. This could be caused by a number of different things. The first tip I have for you in this regard, make sure to get yourself a shutter release and use that when you're doing your long exposures or use the camera on a timer mode. Set the camera, click the timer, and then let the camera go while the exposure clicks so you make sure there's no camera shake because even just clicking the shutter ever so slightly can shake the file and make it blurry. All right, quick tip. If you're shooting long exposures, just make sure that optical stabilization is turned off if your lens has it. Optical stabilization is great if you're shooting handheld shots. It can help to stabilize the shot a little bit, but it can actually make your frames blurry if you're shooting long exposures on a tripod. So make sure to avoid that by turning it off. The third thing to look out for with long exposures is wind. Wind is a nightmare for long exposures with the telephoto lens. I've ruined a lot of shots by just having a little bit of wind while trying to get a 400 mil shot or a 300 mil shot. Some things you can do, find a rock, <laughs> try and place yourself behind a rock, shield yourself as best you can from the wind. If you can find a bush, a tree, a rock, just any kind of cover, get your tripod as low to the ground as possible, weigh down the tripod, make sure your tripod is sturdy. These are all things that are gonna help. And if you're shooting in the wind and there's no cover and there's nothing else you can really do, 
Um, the last thing I would recommend is to just wait for little patterns in the wind where it shifts and maybe stops for a few seconds. I've actually done that for some of my shots. Uh, just keep taking images until one of them is in focus. But if you really want that shot, you just have to try your best. And also just make sure to check into 100% to make sure that those files are in focus on the back of your camera. While I do enjoy shooting long exposures with the telephoto lens, actually most of my shots are handheld and most of my shots are quick shutter speed. So if I don't have to smooth out water or smooth out clouds, um, I love just hand-holding this lens, popping around, taking different shots, and I find I'm able to be a little bit more creative when I use this handheld. Sometimes when you have a tripod, it feels a little bit more restrictive. And I do recommend when you get to a spot, don't just pop the camera straight onto a tripod. I definitely recommend to scout your images handheld beforehand. Now, if you wanna fine tune the composition, you wanna do focus stacking or a long exposure, you just can't get the composition perfect, then okay, once you've found your subject, pop it on a tripod. But I definitely recommend before you decide to put your telephoto lens on the tripod, go ahead, look around, and scout handheld with it. It can be a lot of fun. When you're shooting your handheld shots, uh, also make sure that your shutter speed is high enough to handle you hand-holding the shot. And uh, it's recommended that you shoot a shutter speed that is higher than the millimeter that you're shooting. So if you're shooting 100 millimeters, one one hundredth of a second. If you're shooting 400 millimeters, one four hundredth of a second. This is probably as low as I would ever go. Optical stabilization can definitely help with that as well. Personally, uh, my general rule of thumb, what I've done to just make it easy on myself is to actually shoot most of my shutter speeds double what the millimeter is just to be safe and then I don't have to think about it. So if I'm shooting 100 millimeters, I would actually do one 200th of a second. And if I was shooting at 400 millimeters, I would try and do one 800th of a second. Now, of course, if it's getting dark and it's unavoidable to go down on your shutter speed, well, then I would probably consider popping the camera on a tripod. All right, so one of my favorite tips is, this one's actually a little bit more weird and creative, is to actually use foreground as bokeh with this lens. Um, use the depth of field of this lens to your advantage. So um, it's pretty fun to just pop in front of different bushes, trees, foliage, even branches, and it creates this beautiful texture in your photographs. Textures, colors, um, creates almost like a painterly look. So I definitely play around with this. I've created some really interesting images by doing this technique. Even when, the, it's funny, even when the foreground doesn't look very interesting, it can make for a really intriguing photograph. And my final tip is to just practice, practice, practice. Get out there, have some fun. Don't put yourself in a box. Um, don't take it too seriously. It's just taking pictures. Oftentimes the times where I've just gone out and had fun are the times where I've actually taken my favorite images. And if you're a bit discouraged using this lens, it could be a little tricky at first. Just keep practicing and you're gonna get better at using it. Eventually it's almost gonna be just second nature shooting with this lens. But you really have to just get out there and play around and have fun. All right, well I think that's gonna wrap it up. I hope these tips were helpful for you. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot and subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be releasing a bunch of new videos like this one in the future. And uh, yeah, as always, catch you in the next one.